like chopping wood. What's up, you beautiful people, and welcome to my guitar video. What is my guitar video? It's basically me going through my guitar collection and uh, pick out a bunch of the pieces of guitars that I think are important to uh, my channel, maybe? And uh, that might be interesting for you to hear a little story about and, uh, you know, just hear me talk about. So I've done the uh, Ibanez MTM2 and the Ibanez Universe so far. And today I'm going to venture a little bit into the early start of my YouTube career. Uh, I was using Ibanez guitars a lot during the start of my YouTube channel. But as my channel was becoming bigger and bigger, and uh, I started working with uh, more and more people. I eventually got a chance to uh, start working with a brand called Strictly Seven Guitars. They even went so far to offer me a signature series guitar. And you know, when I started my YouTube career, you know, I could not in a million years imagine that anyone would ever want to make me a signature guitar, but Strictly Seven was the first brand that kind of reached out and uh, asked me if I was interested in doing this. And you know, I had never tried out their guitars before, but I did check on their website, check the uh, the shapes and all that, because even though I was young girl <laughs> right now, and you know, really, I didn't have any bands. Well, I played in bands, but not any big ones, not Six Feet Under or anything like that. But it was still very important for me that the guitar looks like something I would play. So I checked their website and I checked their different models and basically I found a really cool and sick looking super strap model that we ended up making a signature guitar. This was in 2012 and I remember this because at this time I had already started uh, drawing my own guitars, you know, my drawings that would eventually become the Solar guitars, even though you know, I have my own designs. This is a great first step for me to kind of venture into this world, and, you know, uh, rep a cool brand. It's a chance for me to design and, you know, basically map out a guitar that would fit me and my specs and uh, maybe someone would like it. I don't know. All right. All right, so this is the absolute first prototype of this guitar. And this prototype was basically just to, you know, figure out the uh, different specs that I wanted happen with this guitar. So we tried out you know, this is a 27 and a half inch scale length seven string guitar, which is, uh, it's it's longer scaled, I would say. So the low end would sound super awesome and you know, it would be great. And it also came with a Floyd Rose. And uh, this guitar right here has been retrofitted with an Evertune bridge by Evertune themselves when I was on tour in uh, the US. So that's why you have the uh, locking nut right here without the locking nuts. But uh, yes, this has become an ever-tuned guitar right now. Look at the back of this neck here. This neck is extremely flat, but it's also a little bit on the hefty side. It's, it's very flat and not necessarily, you know, as thin as I would want the seven string guitar. But, you know, the more I played it, it made a lot more sense. And uh, I kind of fell in love with the shape of the neck on this guitar. It's very, very D-shaped, I would say. And uh, even though it was thicker than I was used to, you know, I fell in love with it. And, uh, you know, I was just like, okay, let's just go and make a signature guitar. So I'm going to show you the production guitar that I also have. Oh wow, this is dusty right here. All right, so here I have the production, the absolute first production model of the Strictly 7 Solar guitar. And this one still has the uh, the Floyd Rose happening right here. 
There are Seymour Duncan pickups in this guitar right now, but they came with bare knuckle aftermaths. And uh, you have the sl slick white binding on a black body, you know, just like on uh, the MTM2 that I was really fond of. Uh, I kept that look because it's just a sick ass classy look that I like. And uh, well, it's it's dusty though. This guitar needs a little bit of love. That's okay. That's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna love this guitar. Then I'm gonna play him. Okay. But as you can see, it still has the natural back of the uh, neck right there, and uh, really nice maple. Don't remember what these stripes are. If they're mahogany or whatever it is, wenge, probably. And when we made these guitars, I was you know I was just really happy that they would give me two guitars. These were the guitars that they gave me. Like a usual setup when you have a signature guitar with a brand is is that uh, you sometimes you get like free guitars to use on uh, on stage, and uh, sometimes you get custom shop guitars, and then sometimes maybe you have a signature guitar, and uh, you know you can earn a percentage or a royalty if your guitar sells to other people or pe if people make orders. So the setup for my first experience with a signature guitar with Strictly 7 was that a, I would get, you know, two guitars for one year and these are the two guitars that I got and uh, I would get a royalty if people would buy the guitars and order the guitars. So, you know, I was not a big YouTuber back then. How many subscribers did I have? Like 20 or 30,000? Not really that many. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm happy getting these guitars. I wouldn't imagine, you know, them selling guitars at all. But they eventually sold a hundred of the Solar guitars, which is insane. It was not a cheap guitar. It was like 2,500 bucks. And uh, I was blown away at the fact that it seemed like the way that I spec this guitar was to a lot of people's liking. And that made me extremely proud. And it also just further enhanced the uh, feeling I had that I might and someday design my own guitars or, you know, at least, you know, go into uh, a new venture about designing guitars. And uh, after Strictly 7, I left for Washburn and, and in Washburn, I took my designs and they made it happen, basically. So uh, that was the next step when I went to Washburn. But uh, this right here with the 27 and a half inch scale length, it had the bare knuckle aftermaths in it. Uh, I like the aftermaths, but, you know, at that time, I also got to work a little bit with Seymour Duncan. They were really nice with me. They just sent me a box of pickups and I got to try them out. So obviously I found a favorite and I think that's what's uh, in this right now. It's probably like a, a seven string, uh, what could it be? Uh, Duncan Distortion, probably. And I think that's the same for this one right here. This guitar right here was used on the Feared uh, Fuhrer Incarnatus album. This is the guitar that I tracked everything with. And I did that after I got the Evertune installed, I think. I have to think about that. Anyways, let's... Are you okay? <laughs> Shit, the camera just dived straight into the neck of this guitar. Well, that's okay. Did you notice, by the way? The tremolo arm was on when I took it out of the case. That's not the work of a responsible Langland. And out of these two guitars, I just love this one the most because this, this is the one I gelled with and it sounds absolutely incredible and uh, I hope it still sounds incredible. Uh, we're gonna see that later after I made a setup of this guitar. I mean, the strings are not that bad. All right, see if I can find a set. Oh, shit. Custom sets, nine and a half, what? It's actually kind of funny, I was uh, looking through my string box here and I found these old uh, strings. These are custom sets that I got from GHS for my seven string guitars. So they're 62, it's a plain nine to 62. It's interesting, plain nine to 64, okay. Point nine to 60, okay. You know, I was sort of hoping to find like a 008 set because of the long scale uh, 0.9 string will have a lot more tension happening. So it will be a little bit more stiff. Let's just go with the nines to 62 on this. And the 62 on this scale length is basically perfect for drop A. The scale length makes it 
better tension. It just fits really well with the scale length. So let's do this. Yeah, I mean, this retrofitting right here, this outer box that you see is where the Floyd Rose sat. So, I mean, it's not the most beautiful thing I've seen in the world, but you know, that's a wall right there. And I think this is made in 2011, this guitar. It's uh, almost 10 years ago, shit. Spurso locking tuners as well, look at these. This is what's so nice about chasing strings on an Evertune. You just, just do it. Just do it, man. Baby, 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 baby face, yeah. Baby, 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 baby face, yeah. That's me, I'm baby face. But you can call me baby. One thing you're gonna hear when I play this guitar later is that the low end will sound absolutely insane and incredible because of the scale length. But if you play solos, not as cool. Sounds pretty shrill. Not optimal, I would say, the scale length for uh, the soloing aspect. But for the low end action, like if you play drop A, it's gonna sound good. And I'm starting to promise stuff, but I haven't even, you know, I haven't even tried it yet. I haven't tried it in a bunch of years. I'm really excited. Penis is jelly, let's have a coffee break. Should I clean this? I still haven't gotten any lemon oil or any oil at all to use for fretboards. I should. Bamboozled. Bamboozled. That's from Apex. Have you ever played Apex? Probably not. I mean, look at that neck. That looks great. So on this guitar, since I was doing so many different pickup changes on it, I just, I just left the uh, back compartment off. Because that's just uh, how I rolled back in the day. You know, I was trying to find my pickup and my sound during these, uh, this time. And even though I was really happy regarding the bare knuckle, it just didn't fit my play style. I've heard a lot of other players that uh, sound kick ass with bare knuckle pickups, but they just weren't for me, and that's okay. You know, I'm way more into the Seymour Duncan pickups because uh, they're just less voiced, maybe? They let the amplifier and the gear you play, you know, do the work. I think these Seymour Duncans are basically like a really good flat, um, what do you, what do you call it? Flat, flat penis? Flat, uh, vagina? No, flat, flat, uh, a flat. It's a flat. It's so flat right now. Just a really good flat template. A flat template for, you know, letting your gear maximize your tone. Sounds like I'm just rambling out of <laughs> whatever, but yeah, that's basically what I'm doing right now. That's my videos anyway, in a nutshell. Just me rambling about shit. And then people go like, oh, you don't know shit, Ola. You really don't. You just try and hide your ability with your shitty riffs. You know, you think you know something about restringing guitar. Well, you look like a douche nozzle while doing it, so. <laughs> I promise, that that's exactly what they say. At least I think so. Well, the good thing about becoming old is that, you know, you just don't care that much anymore. <laughs> that's great. That's, uh... Ignorance is bliss, as I usually say, and uh, my ignorance is definitely uh, very high at this point. <laughs> Let's go for the kill. Should I remove this little asshole? Probably. I should take the time to just, you know, do a little bit of, of uh, put some extra effort into this. Oh, these are two different screws. That's very, very interesting. What happened to Ola the Swede? Probably lost a screw or two. <laughs> Locking tuners, greatest invention. It's really a good invention though. It saves time. It saves the time, man. It saves the time. I actually went to the Spursal factory when I was on the US tour, my first US tour with Six Feet Under. Or was it the first one or the second one? I don't remember. But my good friend Alan Marcus, who's an insane guitar player, by the way, and he worked for Strictly 7 for uh, at the time. I think he kind of assembled and made 
the final touches on this guitar actually. His dad worked for Spet Spretzel, uh, Pretzel, Spret Spretzel, Spretzel, Pretzel. No, definitely not Pretzel. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, I took a factory tour when I was in Cleveland, Ohio. It was the fun. Okay, so a cool thing here, or a cool, I don't know if it's cool, but basically the uh, this string, the thickest string right here, I have no slack at all here. The winding stops exactly before the tuner. The string is not long enough, but the good thing here with locking tuners is that I can still lock this in the core right there, and it'll be good. Okay, time for some magic. Hello. Are you in sound two already? Let's check. Meow. Okay. Okay, so it's all right. It's in sound two right there. So that means I probably had uh, thinner strings on there. With Evertune Bridge, you need to get the bridge saddle into zone two, and in zone two, nothing happens when I keep on working the tuner, as you can see. It just stays in the same pitch. That's what I want to happen. I want to see where this guitar has been tuned. And then, when I come to the zone two, that's when I can tune the guitar. Okay, so right now this guitar is tuned to... Perfect. Perfect dissonance, okay. Sounds like you're strangling someone. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a... Sounds like a bee. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it all, I'm so stupid. I didn't put on the string tree. Since I don't have the locking nut, you know, I need something that is pushing the strings. So let's put the string tree back. There you go. And suddenly that rattle was gone. I can hear it now even, it's like so right now I'm lowering the low strings. All right. Yeah, it feels like a monster to play. All right, let's bring it back to my rig over here, okay? All right, so let's go play this a little bit, okay? Okay, check, 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 check. Yes. All right, so here it is. This is the Strictly 7 Solar 7 prototype. The first Strictly 7 guitar I got. And it's the one I still love the most. Oh, I just, just noticed this. A small little ding dong, little ring knob right there. Well, that's too bad. All right, let's try this out. Okay, I have it hooked up into the Pliny plugin. Let's go. Okay, the A.
I'm, <laughs> I mean, just listen to that. I mean, that low end is so clear and separated, listen. But playing this tires me the hell out immediately in my right hand. Oh shit. I mean, that's stretch though. Ah. I must admit, it sounds absolutely insane, but just... Just playing. <laughs> it's not as easy as on my solar guitars. And you know, having the longer scale definitely helps. It makes the uh, chugging sounding really clear and really awesome. But the high end, man, it's, it's something else. Oh, I forgot about this, but yes, this is actually 26 frets. I don't know if you can see this. Here's the 24 frets. Shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> Uh, it's just not as easy for me to kind of have play lead on, but I mean, you know, the low end section makes up for that. A lot of you guys know that I'm more into chugging than I am into lead playing, so I mean... It's really good definition in that low end. I'm having a workout right now. Oh my god, I mean I play this thing and the other guitar for like two years <laughs> and you know that just proves that I'm a weakling now <laughs> by playing my shorter scale guitars. I mean this neck is such a monster piece of a neck and even though it sounds incredible on the lower tunings, I mean the definition is super awesome the enjoyment of having that nice separation and that nice sound going it's not enough to make me happy playing guitar right there <laughs>
feeling when I play this guitar, I really have to hunch over it, like... So there you go, that's the Strictly 7 Solar 7 prototype for you. And yeah, the sound is way better than how easy it is to play the guitar. <laughs> but it's sounding absolutely massive, and I can definitely see myself using a guitar like this for a recording of, you know, when I need a 7 string, like drop a song or something like that. It's really, really defined in the low end, and I really, really enjoy that. Sounds incredibly awesome. If you like this type of video, let me know in the comment section. Also, give me suggestions for my next My Guitar video. I have a fair bit of them in my mind happening pretty soon. But if you have someone that you really, really want me to show you, let me know. Okay? Thanks for watching. See you. Bye.